Good morning, it's Tammy with Real Southern Woman, and it's time for Friday morning Bible study. I'm grabbing my Bible because I've been reading it off the computer. Uh, we're in Genesis still. I'm just following along in the story that we've been storyline that we've been following, and in Genesis chapter 33 is where we're going to be this morning. And in Genesis 33. Jacob and Esau meet back up, and they had been separated years before that because of um, them, Jacob stealing Esau's birthright. So um, this morning, we're going to talk about them meeting up again, and um, it says, we're going to start reading in Genesis chapter 3, and it says, and Jacob lifted up his eyes. I hope y'all can hear me. Let me put in my little speaker before we start reading. I'm putting in my little speaker, y'all. A little bit later than we normally do, so I haven't gotten to get dressed because Mama fell last night, and we had to go to the hospital with her, and we didn't get back home till about 2.30. But she's fine, but she got a hematoma right here on her little head, and she got a scratch on her arm. And she had gotten in the bed and decided she her remote control fell in the floor, and she decided she was going to reach down in the floor and get it from the bed, which was not very smart. So she fell on her head. Anyway, she's fine. They did a CAT scan and all that. She was in the best mood, and we just giggled and cut up the whole time we were there while Chris was a good man, and he sat there quietly and played a puzzle on his little iPad. So anyway, um, let's start talking about Genesis this morning. Genesis chapter 33, it says, Jacob lifted up his eyes and he looked, and behold, Esau came, and with him 400 men. And he divided the children um, unto Leah and unto Rachel and unto the two handmaids. He put the handmaids and their children foremost. And Leah and her children, Amy's in there making coffee, it's loud. And Leah and her children after, and Rachel and Joseph hinder most. So he actually put his kids in the order of who was the closest to him, which in a way to me seems, I mean, he had to do it. He had to put them in some kind of order because they're traveling on foot. But in a way it makes you feel he is a good godly man, but still it makes you feel like he has favorites and that it's not right. But then again, you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. So he loved, loved Rachel more than Leah. And so that's who he left in the background just in case his brother was mean, you know, and attacked them. And it says he passed over before them and he bowed himself to the ground seven times. Until he came near his brother, and Esau ran to meet him, and he embraced him. And he fell upon his neck, and he kissed him, and they wept. And he lifted up his eyes, and he saw the women and the children, and said, Who are those with thee? And he said, The children which God has graciously given thy servant. Then the handmaidens came near and they and their children, and they bowed themselves. And Leah also with her children came near, and they bowed themselves. And after came Joseph near and Rachel, and they bowed themselves. And Esau said, I have, oh, and he said, What meanest thou by all of this drove which I meet? And he said, These are to find grace in thy sight, my Lord. And Esau said, I have enough, my brother. Keep thou what thou hast unto thyself. So um, if you continue to read, you see that, that Jacob offers Esau, Esau uh, a lot of gifts. And at first Esau was like, no, I don't need these gifts. But he talks him into taking them. And so both of those boys have been blessed by God. Now... In the commentary, it talks about how um, if we would do like um, uh, Jacob and we would go to the Lord in prayer and ask him for his help in our daily lives and especially in our troubles, 
that we could have more confidence when we did have to face something that God would intervene and help us through it. In other words, we don't need to just pray um, and ask him to help us. We need to pray and believe he's going to help us. And if we do that, then it gives us a peace of mind and them a peace of mind. Let me just say this. This weekend, this is simple in my life, but it's a big deal to me. This weekend, we are taking uh, a lot of teenagers to Florida. Typically, when we go to Florida, Chris drives, okay? I don't have to drive. Um, I don't like to drive. It's hard on my body. I can't move around. It's the same position for a long time. Uh, because we're taking these teenagers, I have to drive. We have to drive two vehicles. And I'm going to be honest with you, I'm not happy about it at all. There's nothing in me that's happy about it. And as it gets closer to time to go, I'm getting kind of antsy and angry and frustrated. Now, uh, what I have to do is take this lesson to heart this morning, and I need to pray to God and tell Him to help me. I need to pray that we have a safe trip. I need to pray to have a better attitude. And and believe that he will help us and help my body that day so that I don't have to be in such a bad mood because I don't need to be a mother in a bad mood going down to Florida with a bunch of teenagers. I need to be a godly mother who loves my children. And sometimes it's harder said than done. But if I would give it to God and I would trust him that we're going to have a good trip down and I would uh, lean on him instead of putting it all on myself, then I would be a lot better off with my attitude. So that's what I plan to do. After I read this story this morning, I thought, you know, I need to apply that in my life with this trip to Florida. Because we can go down there and we can have a blast or we can go down there and make it frustrating. And I don't want to do that. These kids need to have a good time. Um, I don't have my girls much longer and I need to uh, be happy to be with them while I got them. Uh, they've never really been that crazy about going out fishing and going to the beach with me and Chris because they don't really like the heat. We're redheads. We sunburn, you know. Um, but I hope we have a good trip down there. I hope the girls have a good time. We're going to have two cars, and that way they can get out and do things by themselves if they want to. But, of course, I don't want to spend a lot of money either. So y'all just pray that we have a good time. Me and Chris are going to start planning the trip today. And planning what we plan to buy down there, what we plan to eat, what our schedule needs to kind of be with these kids. And uh, just pray we have a good trip. And pray that I will uh, do what's right as a mother and not be mean. Um, because y'all think I'm so sweet, and there's lots of times I'm really not. Uh, especially with your own, you know. You're not always sweet to the, for some reason, if we're ever mean to somebody, it's usually those that are closest to us. And we don't need to be that way. Another thing this uh, lesson taught us is that Esau and Jacob are brothers, and they have been enemies for a very long time. And let me just say this. Um, I read this story years ago, and I mean, I've been reading it off and on, not just continually because we're doing this Bible study, but I'm going to be honest with you. This story in the Bible touched me more than most stories in the Bible when I'm read, just reading through the Bible. Um, now, of course, it didn't today because I haven't been just reading through it, but I have read the story before and just wept and wept and just cried and cried about the love that these siblings had for each other and how they loved each other anyway because, to me, that's important. When Esau uh, came back and saw his brother Jacob, even if he had stolen his birthright, um, he hugged him and he kissed him and he embraced him. Now, whether or not God had uh, providence in that and actually touched the mind of Esau, because God can do that to make Esau soften, to love his brother, or whether Esau just remembered the memories that they had as children playing and how much he loved and missed his brother. We don't know that. But let me just say this. Many of us uh, hold grudges against people and our family members. And we need to let those go and love each other the way God would have us love each other. Because he loves us enough to forgive us.
for who we are and what we've done, we should also do the same for other people. If we can't forgive other people, then why should he even think about forgiving us? Especially if it's somebody that's close to us like a family member. And I know sometimes that's harder said than done, um, but it's the truth. And we should love them no matter what. And we should be able to be the ones who humble ourselves as Christians to say, I love you anyway. Um, and if you can't do that, then you need to do a checkup, okay? Uh, on your heart. Because if you've got the Lord, the heart of Jesus Christ, then you can do that. And you really can do that. And if you feel like you can't, you need to pray about it. And ask God to touch your heart because he can do that too. So um, that's what we're going to pretty much sum up with this Bible study. It's going to be short today. Um, may we be like Esau and Jacob. May we love each other no matter what, even if we have been enemies and stabbed each other in the back. Because Jacob did do his brother that way, but God did punish Jacob and made him live through kind of what he did to Esau because he made him work seven years for Rachel and then her father trick him and give him Leah. And then he had to work seven more years and then he wound up working an additional seven years. So in reality, God did punish Jacob for what he did to Esau. Even if it was God's providence, even if it was God's will for Jacob to be the one that the lineage came from, it still, uh, he still made him see what he had done wrong. And God will do that with us as well. So let's try not to have to uh, have God uh, punish us. And let's try to be good Christians. Um, I hope y'all have a wonderful Friday. I hope y'all have a great weekend. Um, I really wish the weather would be nice while we're down there. And I pray that we catch some fish. We will be coming on live a little bit while we're down there. Um, and I hope we uh, get to see y'all some. So uh, just thanks for tuning in. Thanks for being a part of Real Southern Woman, where real Southern women do love God and aren't ashamed to say that I love Jesus Christ, my Savior. Okay? Um, let's say our prayers, okay? Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for today. We thank you for Friday. We thank you for your word your examples. Um, we thank you for loving us as your children, no matter what we say or do, for loving us. I thank you for giving us um, a forgiving heart when we want one. We can always uh, forgive others if we choose to, and especially if we ask you to help us. I pray that you help me be a tender-hearted mother and wife and not full of abrasion while I'm down there with these children. And I pray that we all have a wonderful time and that we can uh, uh, be good examples for these kids. Um, we just thank you so much for blessing our family and allowing us to have a place down there that we can go to. And uh, we thank you for Real Southern Woman and the people that we have come to know as our friends. May you bless each and every one of these women who take the time out of their day to listen to the Word of God and are just not interested in uh, worldly entertainment. Uh, we thank you for your son who died for us. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. I hope you all have a wonderful day and weekend and we will see you soon on real southern woman and uh, i'll talk to y'all later thanks so much for listening love y'all